Yo, what's going on, guys? Then my offer simple snippets back with another video tutorial on C++ programming. Now, in this video tutorial, we'll be discussing about the three different ways in which we can pass values to a function. That is, we can pass arguments to a function. Now, if you don't know what functions are and how to pass values and arguments to function, you can check out this video which I'm showing on the top right corner in in terms of cards, and you can check it out because you need to understand what functions are so that you can understand how to pass values. And in this video tutorial, we'll be dis discussing the three different ways in which you can pass values to the functions now this is a very important topic and I got a lot of requests from students because there is a slight confusion between the different types in which you can pass values and how they work so what we're going to do is we'll individually go through all the three different types so we'll first go with pass by value or you can also say call by value then we'll see some theoretical aspect for pass by value and we'll move on to the program and we'll also see a diagrammatic representation of what is happening behind the scenes when the program runs Similarly, we'll do the same for pass by reference. That is, we'll go through some theory. We'll see a program and we'll see a diagrammatic representation. That is what is happening behind the scenes. And we'll also see for the same for pass by address. So with that being said, let's get started. So starting off with pass by value. So the call slash pass by value method of passing arguments to a function copies the actual value of an argument into the formal parameters of the function. Now in this case, changes made to the parameter inside the function have no effect on the arguments. And by default, C++ uses call by value to pass arguments. In general, this means that the code within a function cannot alter the arguments used to call the function. So now we've just seen the theory and I know this might not be clear exactly what is happening, but let's take a basic example in the form of a program and it will be very clear. And then again, we'll also see the representation what is happening behind the scenes. So let's quickly move on to the code part. So quickly open up your DC++ ID and create a CPP file. And you can see I've written some code already because this is sort of like a boilerplate and there's nothing happening right now. So let me just explain to you what is happening. We have our header file, then we are using namespace standard and then here is our int main function. And inside that I've created two integer variables a and b. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a function. We'll say void pass by value and we'll pass these values a and b into this function and we will try to swap them. So this is going to be call by value or pass by value kind of function wherein directly the values of a and b are going to be copied in x and y. Okay, so there is no reference and address being used over here. And then what we'll do is we'll first print before swapping the values of a and b. We'll call the function in this part over here. You can see the comment and then we'll see after swapping whether the values of a and b are swapped or not. So inside the pass by value, we'll create a temporary variable in z or in z. We'll say z is equal to x. Then we'll say x is equal to y and y is equal to z. Now this is a simple way of swapping variables using a third variable. And I also have a complete practical program video tutorial for this swapping kind of scenario. You can see in the cards on the top right corner, you can check it out how it works. So we'll not waste a lot of time in that. So we've created a function which takes call by value or pass by value parameters. So directly we've passed it as it is. And let's try to call it over here or before calling it, let's try to save this and let's try to run this what happens. So there you go. You got the result. You can see before swapping a is equal to five, b is equal to six. After swapping a is equal to five, b is equal to six. Now the reason why the swapping has not yet occurred is because we haven't even called the function. So let's try to call the function pass by value and let's pass a comma b. So this is how we pass values or arguments into a function. Now let's try to save this and let's try to compile and run this and let's see if the values are actually being swapped or not. Let me just compile and run. So there you go with the result. You can see a is equal to five, b is equal to six. And even after swapping a is five and b is equal to six. So since it is a simple pass by value or call by value methodology in which we've passed the arguments, the values a and b are directly copied in this function in the form of x and y. So a and b are two separate variables in the main function. X and Y are newly created instance variables, which are only live, or you can say the scope of those int X and Y, which have been newly created using A and B are only going to be live or the scope is only going to exist inside this function. So let's see what happens behind the scenes. Okay, so as you can see on the screen or blackboard, I have the code written, which we just wrote. So we have dash include and the header file, then using namespace standard, then this is our user defined function. And here we have int main function. So we created the pass by value user defined function over here. So what exactly happened is in the memory on this line, when the compilation is done or when the execution is happening. So let's say this is our memory that is the RAM. So inside that we have a memory block whose name we've kept as a, which has value of five. And we have another memory block, which has name of B, which has value six. 
here we just simply print the two values a and b now at this line pass by value function is called so the control from the main function is going to be transferred to this function so here what is going to happen is this value of a is going to be passed to x so there is a new instance variable x which is created in the memory and the value of a that is phi is again copied into that memory location similarly for y b is being passed that is 6 is being passed and the new instance variable again is created and it is given the value of 6 now a and b memory block has some address h 0 6 f and some random address for b some hexadecimal address similarly x has his own address and y has his own address so they are all individual variables and x and y are only going to be present inside this function so what happens is there is one more variable temporary variable int z that is we are creating inside the function which is going to take the value of x so phi is copied over here then we are saying x is equal to y so the value of y is being copied in x so always assignment happens from right to left so right to left so this is lhs this is rhs so rhs value is going to be copied in x so this 6 is copied over here so there is a new value 6 and lastly y is equal to z that is the value of z which we just created that is 5 is now going to be copied over here so this is new value 5 so you can see that x now has 6 and y now has 5 so swapping has happened but you can see that this is happening in x and y and not in a and b so when the function completes the scope of these variables end and they are now out of memory so they are not in the end main function so they are not existing in this main function so after swapping again when we print a and b you can see that there is no change happening to a and b so that is the reason why the value of a and b is printed as it is and there is no actual swapping so this method is known as pass by value wherein directly the values are copied inside the arguments so now that you've understood what is happening behind the scene let's move on to the next type that is pass by reference so let me just read out the theory aspect. So the call by reference or pass by reference method of passing arguments to a function copies the reference of an argument into the formal parameters. Now these formal par parameters are the parameters that we pass inside the function. Inside the function, the reference is used to access the actual arguments used in the call. This means that changes made to the parameter affect the passed arguments. To pass the value by reference, argument reference is passed to the function just like any other value. So again, since this theory is little bit vague, let's move on to the programming part and you'll understand what this theory means later on. So you can come back to this part and again read it out and you'll understand it once you've seen the program and we'll also see the, what happens behind the scenes as well just as we saw for pass by value. So let's move on to the program. Okay, so in the same program, what we'll do is we'll create one more function. We'll say void pass by reference. Now inside the arguments, since we are passing reference, the way we pass reference is we use the symbol and. So I'll say int and x, comma int and y. So I'll tell you what is happening exactly when we go in the behind the scenes kind of scenario. Let's first just create the function. Now inside this again the same thing is going to happen. We are going to use a temporary variable that is in z is equal to x. So the value of x is going to be going in z. Then we'll say x is equal to y. So the value of y is going to be copied in x. And lastly we'll say y is equal to z. So the temporary variable value is going to be stored in y. So the swapping is going to happen. So now here we'll just change the pass by value to pass by reference. And that's the only change that we need to do. We don't need to use the AND symbol over here. We just need to use the AND symbol in the function itself so that it denotes that it is a call by reference or call by or pass by reference. So let's first save this and let's see if this works. So I've changed the function call to pass by reference. So we're not using this function over here. We are going to use this in the int main. So you can see we are calling that over here. Let's save this and let's try to compile and execute over here. Okay, so before swapping, you can see a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 6. And you can see after swapping, a is equal to 6 and b is equal to 5. Which means that the swapping has been successfully performed using that function. And now let's try to understand what is happening behind the scenes so that you understand what exactly pass by reference means. So let's move on to the digital blackboard. Okay, so as you can see, we are on the pass by reference part and you can see this is the program that we wrote. So this was the pass by reference function that we wrote and we use the and symbol over here and here so that we denote that this function is going to take a reference variable and then in the int main we use the pass by reference 
function so here it was a function call so the only difference between the previous code that is pass by value and pass by reference was we use the and symbol over here to denote that this function is going to take a reference variable so let's see what exactly is happening behind the scene right now so again we have int a and b so in the memory so we have a and b we have values of 5 and 6 now what is happening is we print the values of a and b on this line and then we come on this line so when pass by reference function is called what is exactly happening is 5 and 6 is not being passed that is the values are not being passed but a reference variable x and y is created to refer a and b which means x is a new name given to a and y is a new name given to b so inside this function a becomes x and b becomes y so the values are not being passed but we are creating a new name to the same memory location now notice that we do not create a new memory location because we are just creating an alias name which is pointing or which is the same memory block a and b so a is x and b is y so what we are doing is now we are creating another integer variable that is temporary variable z so for that we are creating a temporary variable z what we are doing is z is equal to x so this value is now copied over here 5 since x and a is the same this value is being accessed then we are saying x is equal to y so x was 5 and y was 6 so 6 is being copied over here so this 5 is now becomes 6 so let me just erase this out and lastly we say y is equal to z so value of z is going to be copied in y so the value of z is 5 which is going to be copied over here so i'll write it down 5 and erase this out so after this function finishes that is when we move on to the next line which is going to be printing again of a and b these x and y are going out of scope so they do not exist but however you can see the actual scenario the swapping has already occurred in a and b as well so you can see the values are being swapped over here and when we print it out this time a would be 6 and b would be 5 because inside the function a and b had new names that is you can see an alias name which was x and y respectively but outside that function that is when the pass by reference is called and it x and y goes out of scope again a and b is there in the main function but this time a has become 6 and b has become 5 so the swapping has occurred using an alias name that is using a reference variable so this is how pass by reference works and i hope now you have got a very good idea of what pass by reference means and how it works behind the scenes so now let's move on to the last type that is pass by address methodology so pass by address or pass by pointer or call by address or call by pointer is one and the same thing and let me just read out the theory so the call by pointer method of passing arguments to a function copies the address of an argument in the formal parameters now inside the function the address is used to access the actual arguments used in the call this means that changes made to the parameters affect the passed arguments and to pass the value by pointer argument pointers are passed to the function just like any other value now we before we move on to the coding part if you don't know what pointers are you can check out the video which you can see on the top right corner in the cards i've put that video and we've discussed a lot about pointers and some basics and we've also saw some implementations that is dynamic memory allocation and how to achieve dynamic memory allocation using pointers so if you are not clear with what pointers are you might want to check that because it is a little bit of difficult subject in terms of beginners reviews so you might want to check that out okay so now let's move on to the programming aspect so that you understand what this theory means and we'll also see the behind the scenes scenario what happens over there okay so now we have two functions void pass by value pass by reference we'll create one more function that is void pass by address which is also known as pass by pointers now inside this what we are going to do is the arguments that are going to be used are going to be actual pointers so i say int star x comma int star y so these are going to be pointers so what we are going to pass is the address now again swapping we'll do the same thing what we'll do is we'll say int z that is a temporary variable equals to star x so i'll tell you what this is happening in the behind the scenes scenario then i'll say star x is equal to star y and star y is equal to z or z just save this and in the main function let's try to change the function name that is pass by address and here the way we pass addresses we have to use and symbol again so this time the address is going to be passed 
So let me just save this and let's see if the swapping actually happens or not. So we have a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 6. So it has to be swapped. So let's try to compile and run. Okay, so the program ran successfully and you can see before swapping a is 5 and b is 6 and after swapping a is 6 and b is 5 which means that swapping has taken place successfully using that pass by address function. But now let's try to understand what is happening behind the scenes and how this pointer works to actually swap the values. So let's move on to the digital blackboard. Okay, so this was the function pass by address that we created and this was the call over here. We passed the address by using added symbols and inside the function we've used actual pointers as arguments. So this was the only change compared to pass by address and pass by reference. So let's see what happens behind the scenes in the memory. So again starting from the first line we have a which is having 5 and we have b which is having 6. Now a has some memory address let's say for example hash 010. Now this is just for reference now these addresses are weird numbers which are sort of like hexadecimal numbers you can check it out later on but let's assume that this number is hash 010 and let's assume that the address of the memory location wherein we've named it as b is hash 100 okay so these are the addresses of this actual memory block and we've given this name ourselves in our code okay now what is happening is we pass these addresses of a and b inside these pointers so we have created a pointer in the memory so we have this pointer star x whose value is an address of a so inside this pointer we have hash 010 similarly inside this pointer star y so the pointer is y the way we access the value pointing by the pointer is by using star so i'll tell you what is happening and inside this the address is going to be address of b so hash 100 Okay, so pointers store the address of other normal variables. So you already know that if you have seen my video and if you haven't, I would highly recommend you watch that. So now let's move ahead and here the function is called pass by address. We pass the values. Oh, sorry. We pass the address and then let's go inside the function. What is happening at the first line? We create a new integer variable that is a temporary variable Z and we say Z is equal to star X. Now when we say star x to the right hand side that is rhs side what we are saying is we want the value which is pointed by this pointer. So what is happening is the program is going to use this address and going to see at this address what is the value being stored. So at hash 010 we know that the value is going to be 5. So basically it is pointing over here. So this value is going to go in z. Now we are going to say star x is equal to star y. So now star x is pointing to this memory location because the address is same the pointer has the same address now what is going to what is happening is at this line it is saying the value being stored at this address is being swapped with the value which is stored at this address so we know star y is pointing to this value since the address is same the value stored at this address is 6 so we have 6 over here on the rhs and star x means this location so 6 is being copied over here so let me just erase this out. So okay, we got 6 over here. And lastly, we have star y that is the pointer y is pointing to this memory location. So at this location, we want the new value of z. So z is 5. So 5 is going to be copied over here. And then the function ends. And then we move on to the next line that is printing of a and b. Now you can see behind the scenes, all this process has taken place and the swapping has actually occurred. So the new value of a is 6 and the new value of b is 5. And all this is happening because we used the concept of pointers, which were pointing to those memory respective memory locations. Now I know this is a little bit tricky and it is like a little long process using pointers, but I hope now it is very clear now that you can graphically visualize it and we've seen the entire process behind the scene what is exactly happening. So now if you go to the theory and go to the program, you'll understand each and every methodology of how to pass values, how to pass reference and how to pass address and what they exactly mean and how they work behind the scene. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood all the three concepts and if you have any doubts and if you have any comments, you can always put them in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Peace.